Good morning. I would like to thank Sages for the opportunity to present today. I have no relevant financial disclosures. The treatment of melanoma continues to evolve as we expand our knowledge of the cell cycle and the immune system. With the addition of checkpoint inhibitors, MEK inhibitors, and BRAF inhibitors, this has changed the previous established treatment algorithm, allowing for more adjuvant therapy options. However, these agents may be associated with high toxicity, non-response, or long-term treatment failure due to novel tumor mutations. Thus, we propose the use of a patient-specific melanoma vaccine. Today, we will discuss the results of a pre-specified interim analysis of our phase 2b clinical trial. In brief, the vaccine was created using at least one milligram of tissue from the resected specimen. The tissue then underwent freeze and thaw cycles to create a tumor lysate, which was then loaded into empty yeast cell wall particles. The yeast cell wall particle was then phagocytized by autogenous dendritic cells that were obtained from the patients at routine lab draws. The dendritic cells then stimulate the patient's immune system to mount an attack against the melanoma. Patients receive the injections monthly for three months, following by booster vaccinations at six months, 12 months, and 18 months. Subjects included were those with stage three and four melanoma that was considered to be resectable. They were treated with standard of care resection and or systemic therapy. In order to be eligible for the vaccine, they needed to be rendered disease free prior to the initiation. Patients were enrolled based on the additional inclusion criteria listed and randomized in a two to one fashion vaccine to placebo. During treatment, subjects were monitored for disease recurrence as the primary endpoint was disease free survival at two years. The pre-specified interim analysis was at six months from the 120th randomization. However, at that time point, only 119 had been randomized, 18 in the vaccine group and 37 in the control. When broken down into per-treatment analysis of patients the compl that completed six months of therapy, the per-treatment group included 49 vaccine subjects and 30 control subjects. In regards to demographics, the only significant difference was seen in age, which was higher in the vaccine group. In the per-treatment analysis, there were also more patients with ulceration in the control group. However, the ulceration status of either group was unknown in approximately 60%. In regards to toxicity, 36.4% of all subjects experienced treatment-related adverse events, 80% of which were grade one or mild. There were no grade four or grade five adverse events. There was a statistically significant difference in the distribution of total systemic adverse events. As you can see, there were more adverse events that were grade one in the vaccine group versus grade two or grade three in the control group. The most common systemic toxicity was fatigue. In regards to disease-free survival, the, in, the intention to treat group, there was no difference. Likewise, in the per-treatment group, there was also no significant difference. However, there did show a strong trend towards increased disease-free survival in the vaccine group as compared to the control group. In conclusion, from the interim analysis, we know that the TLPLDC vaccine is safe and feasible to produce. Although disease-free survival in the interim analysis was not significantly longer in the vaccine group, there is a strong trend towards this in the per-treatment group. The absence of a trend in the intention to treat group may be attributed to the fact that patients who recurred likely had a more aggressive form of melanoma and are unable to respond to a vaccine which requires time for the immune system to mount an attack as well as repeated dosing to complete the therapy. Therefore, we are interested to see the results at the conclusion of the trial. We are also conducting a bridging trial that will allow patients to be treated with the TLPL-DC vaccine as well as checkpoint inhibitor concurrently. This will allow us to determine if personalization of treatment with the TLPL-DC vaccine and the checkpoint inhibitor could have a synergistic effect. Thank you, and I'll take any questions at this time.